Good morning. How's everyone? Welcome to outdoor patio worship. Woohoo! Yeah, beautiful day. Not too hot yet. Thankful for that. I am Pastor Ray. I am pastor of college and emerging adults, and I just want to say hello and welcome. So good to see your eyes. Uh, we drove. Uh, I had um, multiple days off for the first time since February. This past week, how many of you have actually had multiple days off this summer, like days in a row from work? Yes, good, good, awesome. Thanks, bud. Yeah, yeah, you're like, my whole summer's a day off. It's <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, uh, yeah. So what, I d what we did is we drove to the coast just to make sure the ocean was still there. So much has changed. You just don't know. And we saw it, and I don't know about you, but when I get to the ocean, I have one goal, which is to get in the water. That is my goal. I don't care how cold it is. I just want to get in. But I know it's going to be cold. And especially up here when, you know, up here is the cold water in the Pacific. And so I get there and I have to literally coach myself. Like I have to amp myself up. I can't just get and get in. I'm not that guy who like just jumps in like, woohoo. No, I like have to like mentally prepare and coach myself in. And once I get past the you know, frigid Pacific water, once I get past that initial shock, I am immersed and all that anxious energy is converted into swimming and just being immersed in it and like laying on my back and going, yes, there's something about being in water for me like that, like an ocean, being in something bigger, <laughs> being like in a large, like this is bigger than my life, this is bigger than my issues, bigger than all my anxieties, something about that that I need. And that for me is what worship is. It's saying, yeah, you know, our anxieties, our issues, our challenges, they're real, but there's a bigger story. There's a story of love. And I want to immerse myself in the words and the prayers and the language of that story because I need that. And I know for some of you, you had to coach yourself to get here. <laughs> You had to say, look, come on, let's do this, right? You had to amp yourself up, and I get that. That's all part of it, but now that you're here, we want you to be immersed in the language and the love story of God, because I need that. Here is words from St. Benedict to prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Listen to this. He says his prayer. O gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O oh God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen for your word, a heart to love you, a life to proclaim you through the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Can we say amen? By the way, we can speak. It's a good to speak. Speak. We can speak. Don't sing. We're a humming church. And I know that's like, oh, what about the immersion stuff? That's all. But you know, we're doing what we can with what we got. And we want to be a humming church. So let me hear just one hum, just to make sure you're awake in the key of G. Because we're starting. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, so just hum away. Don't sing the words. But, you know, let, <laughs> there's a verse that says, let the words be in your heart. That's our verse right now. So thank you for being conscientious and mindful of that. Also, we are a mask or space age face shield wearing church. Thank you very much. This is new for me too. And I appreciate your being conscientious. I know it's inconvenient and hot and etc. But it's what we do. It's what we do to say, hey, we're being mindful of where our neighbors are at. We want to be conscientious even though it's inconvenient right, to do things like hum and sing and that it's not normal and that's a bummer, but I don't know. For me, this whole thing, <laughs> you know, 149 days now, <laughs> no one's counting. <laughs> this whole thing for me is like, you know what, adapt, buddy. Just adapt. That's me. That's my coach. <laughs> that's my coach. It's like, just adapt because <laughs> you know what, we got, we, got no other, we got no other way forward. So hopefully we can just adapt and do this thing. And we want to say hello to any kids out there. Buddy, I'm sorry to call you out like that. I didn't mean to embarrass you. I just want to say thank you for worshiping with us. The moments that I remember 
when I was, you know, 8 to 12, being with the people of God in the context of worship were, for me, really pivotal for my walk with God. Not because I remember anything this guy said, but just because I remember what it was like to be with the people of God. So thank you. It's good to see you. There are, there are some fun stuff up here if you see kids who are like, you know, need something to do. <laughs> um, there's some cool activity boxes and bags. And we just want to welcome you, though, to this space because that you're not the future. You're the now of the church. So thank you. Um, during this unique time, we also want to greet each other. I don't want you to actually touch or do a high, uh, maybe like a, what is it, a Jim and Pam high five? Yeah, maybe one of those. But here, just turn to your neighbor, someone you don't know, someone you don't live with currently, and say this to your neighbor. Say, God's got a vision for the future, and it's going to be I. And say it like at the end, like the I. Do that. It, it helps me. God's got a vision for the future. Go ahead, to your neighbor, tell them, God's got a vision for the future, and it's going to be I. good. That's like a long sentence to repeat. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, the truth is God is going to make all things right one day, and that's why we worship. Thank you. Well, good morning. Okay, so I've, I've been told that I am a loud singer, so if you feel sad that you're missing out, I'm really loud, so it's okay. <laughs> Just ask my wife. She's like, hey, quiet down. My kids are like, hey, quiet down, Dad. You're too loud. And then I was practicing these songs, and they're like, you're really loud. And then they plug me into a sound system with speakers, so we're all in good shape. No, we're going to sing together. Um, you can stand if you want. I know this is, this is weird. Let's just let's kind of put it out there. This is super weird. Uh, I'm the only one talking. I can't see your face. So I feel, you know, but it's okay. Um, it's all right. This is what we're doing. We're going to worship. We're here. <laughs> we're here to worship. The early church couldn't sing loud anyway. Mm. So we're right there with them. Amen. Yeah, that's good. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night. Waking sleeping thy presence my
may be seated, we're gonna pray. And at the end of this prayer, feel free, even though we're not singing, you are welcome to pray the Lord's Prayer out loud with me, okay? So let us join our hearts in prayer. Lord God, you are the creator of the world, the sustainer of all life, the lover of our souls, our counselor and guide. Your son Jesus promised that you would never leave us or forsake us. And you sent the Holy Spirit to live in us to be with us, to intercede for us. And even though you know the prayers of our hearts, you want us to bring them to you, to ask you, to seek you, to draw near to you. And Lord, in my past week of pastoring, I have heard of the tragic death of someone in an accident. I have visited a woman in her last hours. I have heard stories of loneliness and isolation of elderly members of our community. I have had contact with people undergoing cancer treatment and experiencing serious depression right now. Lord, many of us here today could add to that list. And so we do lift up to you those individuals today who are suffering, who are in pain, who are grieving. We ask, Lord, that you would comfort them, bring peace to them, bring healing to them, and more than anything, that they would know your love and your care in their hearts. And Lord, whatever it is that we bring to you today, no matter how big or how small, it's all very important to you. And we lift up our prayers to you for those who are suffering, but we're also mindful that nothing is normal right now. We're mindful that the unknowns of the end of a virus keep us feeling tentative and uncertain in our lives. So Lord, we ask that you would help us to just seek you, to set our sights on you, the one constant in the midst of it all. May we trust you with the future of our health, our finances, our jobs, our schooling. May you guide each one of us as we seek new ways to interact, to connect with others, to learn and to work. And may you hear our cries of loss and lament, our frustrations, our pleas for a return to normalcy. And to that end, Lord, we pray that those who are working diligently in science and in the medical field, that they would find relief, treatment, vaccination in what seems like an unending period of pandemic. Lord, we admit that to many of us, the world just feels unsafe today. And so may you bestow upon each one of us believers the knowledge deep in our souls that we are under your care, that no matter what befalls us in this world, we are never forsaken or abandoned by you. And Lord, as a sign that we endeavor to live in this world with our eyes open to your reality, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, we are not going to pass the offering plate because we are not in normal times, but we still do uh, take this time to commemorate an offering. And what is an offering? But an offering is giving freely. And God gives so freely to us, so we give freely back to God. And there are ways that you can do that. If you're here today and you want to uh, give a check, we have a gray box over here by the check-in desk that you can put your check in. You can give online. It's easy to go onto our website and see where you can click that button. Or you can text to 97... Let's see, what is it, 77977. You'll see that also on our website where you can just text your money. So there's three easy ways to do that. And so we are mindful again that God gives freely to us and we give freely. Amen.
is my shepherd I won't be wanting I won't be wanting He makes me rest In fields of green It's all right to give these guys a hand. Let's do it. <clears throat> I, uh, I just want to praise God for Chris and Beth being here. It's so wonderful to be up on a platform with them, uh, leading you all in the worship of God. It's a great joy and privilege for us to be here. And having Ray and Shannon, the three of us, uh, together at once is a real gift to me. And I'm grateful for safety team and ushers who make this possible, volunteering their time. And also to, to Hines, we've got sound technicians, we've got um, Patty, and, and we're grateful for John, and so many who make this service possible. And we want to be able to bless you and to meet you where you are. And I, I 
Um, love this environment, actually. I really <laughs> appreciate that we have this wonderful location as a downtown church and this incredible patio. And friends, let's be reminded that we are joining in all of creation and declaring the praises of God as you look around you at all this nature that we have, this beautiful landscape. Um, and did you hear the bell ring? We added that. That was a new touch this morning um, at five till for the service. We rang the bell. And just to remember, there is good news that awaits us here. And as Chris just declared in this song, it followed you here. <laughs> good Shepherd followed you here. And so you are an environment where you are blessed and where you are encounter uh, the risen Lord who is here in our midst. And more good news. Did you hear that the Giants beat the Dodgers in L.A. last night? That's right. Yeah, I've been watching. I know it's not the same kind of baseball we're used to watching, but I'm enjoying it. Even with the canned background noise and all that, you know what? They're putting their best foot forward. So um, thank God in these small things too. So we're going to continue our series of messages on questions that, that Jesus asked. And we're just remembering that when we come to Jesus as our answer, <laughs> he will challenge us with questions. And he constantly did this. This was a very traditional method of teaching for rabbis at that time. They would ask their followers questions and cause them to enter into moments of introspection. And today we have a particularly moving story where Jesus heals a blind man. So we're going to turn now to Mark. Last week we were in John's Gospel, the fifth chapter, and now we're going to Mark chapter 8. So let's hear the word of God. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. It looked like trees walking around. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Jesus then sent him home. Let's just pause for a word of prayer. Lord, we do give you thanks and praise for a time to gather here in your presence to be with the people of God and to reflect on your word and what it means for our lives today. We're thankful, Lord, that you led us here. <laughs> and we're thankful, Lord, that you followed us here. <laughs> and because you did, Lord, you followed each and, everyone, each and every person here. We know we will encounter you in an especially unique way. Or we know where two or three are gathered in your name, that there you are in the midst of them. And so, Lord, we pray that you would open our hearts, that we would allow you to enter into them, and Lord, that we would see you more clearly this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the only account in all of the Gospels where it takes Jesus a second time to complete a healing. <laughs> Jesus made a first attempt at this, and it didn't work, and then he got it right the second time. And as I reflected on the scripture this past week, it made me think to myself, Jesus, didn't you go to a rabbi school where they taught that elective how to heal a blind man right in the first attempt? <laughs> I mean, clearly, when he was turning water into wine, he got that right the very first time. He took that elective. I unfortunately missed that one while I was in seminary, which is really too bad, turning water into wine. But Jesus takes a second attempt to heal this man. The first time he, he puts his hand on his eyes, spits on, the, spits on the ground, spits, and he says, do you see anything? And man says, well, I see, thing, I see people like trees that are walking around. And then Jesus performed it a second time and he got it right. You know, I can relate to this story. About a year ago, my children got me a great Father's Day gift. It was a Star Wars pancake griddle. So the thought is that I would make Star Wars pancakes in the shape of the characters. So I gave it a shot, and the first time I was noticing as I was making it, I go, maybe I'm pouring a little bit too much batter into the griddle. And then I took the pancakes off, and I show them to my kids, and I say, do you see anything? And they mumbled something, but it wasn't the name of one of the Star Wars characters. So I didn't get it right the first time. Then I did it the second time with slightly less batter and showed them. 
and I have been the pancake maker in our family ever since. You better believe it. Friends, they look so real. It's like you, was right, you were right there in the movie. Do you see anything? That's the question that's being asked in this story. And Jesus, heal, Jesus here heals this blind man, but it takes a second time to do it. And there's, a, there's, it's hard for us to know exactly why it is it required a second attempt. But I want to think that it wasn't some type of shortcoming or oversight of Jesus that he missed at the tail. But rather, perhaps it was his way of showing compassion for this man. Of not being able to see his whole life. If he goes, you know, too much too soon. We're going to do this in phases. <laughs> I'm going to show compassion on him. We're going to try it once. What do you see? Take it in. And then a second time. Out of Jesus performs this miracle. And friends, it's good for us today to consider the implications this scripture may have for our lives. And I want to think that all of us this past week have prayed for a very specific prayer without even realizing it. And that is for us to have 2020 vision. Get it? It's 2020. Come on. 2020 vision. We're meant to have 2020 vision. And you want to know why we especially need 2020 division, vision today? Did any of us think 2020 was going to turn out like this? That we'd all be sitting on the patio wearing masks in the middle of a pandemic? I'm wondering if you and I need our sight restored this morning. <laughs> if maybe we need for Jesus Christ to perform that miracle of healing in our lives and to consider what it is that we are seeing. <laughs> because Jesus wants to give us new sight to be able to see through the eyes of faith <laughs> and not our own circumstances. And there's several lessons that we can take away from today's scripture. And the first one is this. Jesus wants to give you 2020 vision in 2020. And I want to ask you now the question that he asked this man. Do you see anything? Or perhaps more poignantly, what do you see? Do you see the circumstances around you? Do you see all the changes we're having to make, all the adjustments? Do you see masks? Do you see a pandemic? Do you see change? Or do you see Jesus and his purposes in plain view? It's really important for us to consider what do we see? Because in this scripture passage, what's really happening in the gospel of Mark is it's about spiritual blindness. This is particularly true leading up and through chapter 8. Right before this event, this pericope, this story, falls between two other pivotal stories. One is the feeding of the 4,000, where Jesus takes just a, a handful of loaves and multiplies them, multiplies them to thousands. And his followers, before this story, and after the, the 4,000, they are walking to Bethsaida, and they start going, oh man, we didn't bring enough loaves <laughs> to where we're going. Jesus says, he says to them, are you so blind? Don't, don't you see it's not important to look at your circumstances, but to look at me, that I'm, I'm, I'm with you in all of this. And he says, are you so, are you so deaf in your hearing? Are you blind to see I, that here I am? Do you not remember the loaves? And then following this story, the one that, we, that I read, is this encounter with Jesus with the disciples where they say, Jesus says, who do people say that I am? And they, they start speculating, the Elijah, and they take a couple other guesses at it. And then Jesus turns to Peter and says, yeah, but who do, you, who do you say I am? Peter says, you're the Messiah. You're the Messiah. <laughs> you must be. And Jesus confirms that is, in fact, who he is. And it seems to me, friends, that we in the same way need to consider of who is standing in our midst, who is in our presence, and to consider if there are potential ways that we can be blind to what God may be doing all around us. That he too is asking us this question, what do you see or do you see anything? <laughs> and to know that he wants us to have him in plain view. You know, it seems to me that there can be spiritual blindness in our lives in, in many different ways. And I think sometimes as we're looking at what's going on around us, we can get really frustrated with some of the limitations. <laughs> you know, we can, we can think to ourselves, I don't hear this as much necessarily at Bidwell 
or some of the people that I talk to, but there are many who complain about masks and I don't want to wear a mask and what about my, my rights and I don't want someone telling me to wear a mask. Although we are serving community, let's remember that. It's not about us, it's about serving others, right? But you ever think about how that really minor inconvenience, and bear in mind, I'm one of those guys who constantly forgets to bring him his car, and has to turn around, go home, get the mask, bring it for my kids. But how minor of an inconvenience that really is for all of us. <laughs> have you ever thought about what this would be like to go through this as a, as a third world country and to have less infrastructure and to think about how helpless one would feel and that perhaps maybe we're a little blind to our privilege? <laughs> we can be blind to many of our privileges because how we experience this is very dependent on where we sit. <laughs> and we want to be aware. We want to have hearts that are grateful for what we have, not what we don't have. You know, a lot of us, myself included, have looked back on what life was like before the pandemic. And have you ever said to yourself, wow, how can I have been, a, been so blind to all the good things that I had? <laughs> We've all had those moments, right? And you've heard me joke about, I miss baseball, because you guys know I go to a lot of baseball games, Earl Park, I really enjoy that. It's very life-giving to me. But there are other things that now I'm looking back on. You know what I've really taken for granted? Teachers teaching children in classrooms. Who knew? Who knew, right? <laughs> that right now we would be going, oh, we had it so good. <laughs> we had it so good. We had teachers in classrooms and we had big gatherings and we had church and sanctuaries and, and we were shaking hands, right? And, and, and sometimes we want to stop and we want to express appreciation for all the good things that we we did have and how much God blessed us and also to consider a year from now are you going to look back and go oh wow I had this thing so good are you aware are you taking off those blinders <laughs> are you paying attention with gratitude with what you do have not focusing on what you don't but on what you do <laughs> see we can be blind we can look back and go oh I had it so good <laughs> are you taking that time to go Wow, but look at what I do have. Look at what I can enjoy. Because God wants us to focus on purposes, not these problems. <laughs> and also, we can be blind sometimes, and I hope that all of us in our own way are, allow, are retreating into our own heart and examining our lives and looking at other ways we can be blind. Maybe blind spiritually in the sense of we lean too much on our own sense of, of righteousness and standing before God and allowing ourselves to go, I need Jesus in plain view. I need Jesus as much as anybody. You know, Jesus really condemned self-righteousness <laughs> more than he did sin itself as being the main thing people were just totally blind to, how much they were convinced of like their own right things, the right things they did. And we can allow ourselves that time, that 2020 vision, to examine our hearts <laughs> and go, wow, I can focus on these things right now, these purposes and what God's doing in me. If God wants to give us 2020 vision in 2020, we need that restored right now, friends. We don't want to be looking at the circumstances and, oh, how long is this going to go? And God will determine that. And you and I both know he's Lord of the storm. <laughs> he is Lord of the storm. He's God of our salvation. He's already got the pandemic licked. He's using it for his purposes. What purpose is he doing in your own life right now? <laughs> God wants to give us 2020 vision in 2020, that's the first lesson we can take away from this scripture. The cure us of, of blindness, right? But also in this passage, vision can take time. Vision can take time. And we see that in this story. Jesus shows compassion for this man of going, you know what, we're going to do kind of a first healing, first round, give this guy a little bit of time for it to set in. Maybe in between the first time and the second time, the, guy, the man will examine himself and consider what he's seeing, and the second time will complete it. You know, I wonder if sometimes we need to look at the slow work of God in our lives, which doesn't mean we don't look within our hearts proactively and examine ourselves, but we also go, you know, there's some things God, God's just, get, it's just gonna take time to, to get well in my life. <laughs> I need to let God to do that. How is God maybe using a challenge or a shortcoming, even praying away for your own good to be able to see better? I read last week, the 17th century Dutch painter, uh, Rembrandt, that doctors now say that he more likely than not had an eye condition called strabismus. And what that does is it, it's misalignment of, of one's eye that undoubtedly Rembrandt was actually aware of, but given the way that he used light for perception in his paintings, 
and it disaffected depth perception, it probably allowed him to be able to have three-dimensional settings in two-dimensional paintings. <laughs> you see, it was this weakness that he probably throughout his life, he'd look at himself in the mirror and there's misalignment of the eye and go, oh, I want this wished away. I want this to go away. But I wonder if, in a way, it was the way God used him to bear fruit in his life when he was creating works of art like the return of the prodigal son, <laughs> right? And the, the, the storm painting that he created as well. Storm. And in the same way, God can do that in our life, can take these circumstances we see as shortcomings and allow us to actually see better and to produce better fruit in us and through us. And we can ask ourselves that now. Is there a way God is doing that? As we pray and bring a shortcoming, we have a challenge before him in prayer. Craig Rochelle, a pastor, many of you have heard, heard of before. He's a pastor of the largest church in America called Life Church. He says, you know, when it's not God's time, you can't force it. But when it is God's time, you can't stop it. <laughs> and we want to consider what is it God is doing in his own time in our life with what we have, our strengths, our shortcomings and all and how he is using all of those to give us new sight, 2020 vision. So we can see God wants to give us 2020 vision in, in 2020. Also that vision can take time. <laughs> to be made well can take time. But thirdly and finally in this passage, Jesus here wants to lead you and me by the hand. And did you see in this scripture that Jesus takes the man by the hand and withdraws him withdraws him to a solitary place. He grabs him by the hand and the blind man lets him. And perhaps that's the most poignant part in this story. <laughs> Letting Jesus grab us by the hand. And I want to ask you, who's holding your hand this morning? Is it the self-help book you're clinging to? And look, we've all read them. Sometimes it can do a little bit of good. It can give you that small adjustment that you need. But who's holding you by the hand? Who's speaking wisdom and truth in your life? Who are you looking to to make you well? And some of us, sometimes, maybe there's a person in your life that's holding you by the hand, a friend or someone, and maybe giving you some bad advice and maybe not shaping you into the person of God you're meant to be, of character, <laughs> of grace and truth. Maybe there's someone else leading you by the hand and shaping you and shaping your character. And we want to ask ourselves, are we allowing Jesus to hold us by the hand on a day-to-day -day journey, on an adventure? Lately, I've been looking at refreshers for my own prayer life. This is something that I've had a habit of doing for a long while. I, I tend to view uh, my prayer life and devotional life really much in the way that you do an exercise routine. You, we all know that after six or eight weeks, you have to refresh what you're doing in order to keep growing healthy and strong and to look forward to what you're doing or else it just gets mundane and ordinary, doesn't really produce fruit. So I've been changing up my prayer routine and I've been leaning on something, a tool, and it's called John Calvin's Five Rules of Prayer. So I'm going like back to like, you know, seven, 16th century, looking at Calvin, right? And finding this very practical thing. Many of us know him more as a, as a, a theologian. He's actually, above all things, just a very devout man of God and a pastor. And so I've been looking at this and he says, you know, what we have to do during the day to allow Jesus to lead us by the hand is what we want to do is keep turning our hearts back toward God because we're so prone to being distracted. And he says, these are the five rules of prayer. He says, five fixed points during the day. You bookend your, your day with prayer, morning and night, maybe even before your feet hit the floor, off the bed, devoting your day to God. And before you, at, at nighttime, before you go to sleep. He says, right before you start your, your actual work for the day, just reorienting, just making sure you're, you're praying over that and bringing your affections back toward God. And then before the midday meal and after, I think it was his way of saying that we can be distracted. If you're anything like me, and, and Shannon has mentioned this a number of times in her sermon, she's talked about the Pixar film Up. Remember, remember the dog that goes, squirrel, <laughs> right? I see him too during the day. Lots of squirrels all around me. I get distracted by that squirrel. <laughs> Gets distracted, turning toward other things. And then my heart might chase it for a little while and go, you know what, you don't want to be chasing down that squirrel. By and large, just a waste of time. <laughs> It takes me away from God's purposes during the day. And sometimes that prayer, hinging my day around prayer, 
can get me steeped back in the purposes of God because, friends, Jesus wants to take us by the hand and, and lead us and show us fullness of life. And yes, there is that point in our life where we accept him as Savior and Lord and Shepherd, but there's the day-by-day -day commitment we want to we want to have of keep turning our our heart, that our affections are really captured by Christ and who he is in our lives. Because friends, what he wants to do day by day is give us the guided tour to see clearly <laughs> the work of the kingdom all around us. I was, uh, every year, I have a film that I enjoy watching very much and I can't wait till my kids are old enough to, en to enjoy it with me. And uh, go figure, it's a baseball movie. Don't you guys get tired of hearing about baseball? <laughs> um, I know, it gets annoying for me. Uh, it's called Field of Dreams. And it's, a, it's, a, it's really a wonderful film with uh, Kevin, Fo Kevin, Kevin Costner, not Foster, Kevin Costner, uh, who plays Ray Scabella. And he's a, a farmer in Iowa, and he hears this voice supernaturally that says, if you build it, they will come. And at first, he's not sure what, what's, what he's talking about, <laughs> what the Spirit is saying, and then he realizes it's building a baseball field. So he builds it, and he's got stands, and then he sits in the stands, and he's watching all these classic baseball players of old scrimmaging against one another, and he's interacting with them. But initially, only he and then his wife can see it. In the meantime, there are people who are scoffing at him and going, ah, oh, what are you doing? You're going to lose everything, your industry, your, your success. And he goes, oh, wait, eventually they'll see it. And eventually more and more are able to see this invisible reality that's at work all around them. And it makes me wonder, friends, maybe that's just the type of sight that we're truly looking for. You know, that Jesus, he wants to show us the kingdom. You know, Martin Lord Joins, a famous preacher, had once said that most Christians know just, just enough about Christianity to lose their enjoyment of, to lose their enjoyment of life, but not enough to experience fullness of joy. That's what you get from 2020 vision, friends of looking at your purposes, not your circumstances, not your problems, not uncertainty. <laughs> That's what Christ is offering us today, is this day-by-day -day journey of guiding us by the hand <laughs> and leading us there, showing us the kingdom, <laughs> fullness of joy, fullness of life. And I'll tell you, there's one more detail I want to just point us to from this scripture today. Did you notice at the very beginning of this passage that it was a, a group of peers, a group of, a small community who brought this blind man to Jesus? It wasn't just his own volition. He needed some encouragement. He needed some prompting. What occurs to me about that is how to have 20-20 vision. We are dependent on one another as well, that yes, we allow Jesus personally to lead us by the hand. But also we need our friends in faith, don't we? <laughs> to encourage us to, to look at your life and going, hey, Ray, I see God at work in your life here. <laughs> wow, did you know that? Did you see that? Well, no, but thanks for showing that to me. We can say it to, to Ruth and to John. Wow, look at what God's doing in your life. Or, whoa, I hadn't seen it that way before, Henry. Or it could be Beth. Wow, look, what, what's, look what's happening right now in, in the work you're doing. And... <laughs> Look at that. Wow, I, I, didn't, I hadn't seen that before. And how we need each other, don't we? We need others to keep pointing us to Jesus, to keep him and his purposes in plain view. It's so pivotal. We do not have a go at, at, go at it alone faith, but we need the encouragement of one another to allow others to keep pointing to Jesus, his purposes, the reality of the kingdom of God, friends, breaking in through our lives, working in us and working through us. So I want to ask you this morning, do you see anything? <laughs> what do you see? Because, wow, we can point around at the pandemic and all the changes and look, it's frustrating. <laughs> but does Jesus call us to a life of frustration? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I don't think you do either. We want to keep Jesus in plain view, 
that amidst all this, our purposes do not change. To enjoy God every day, to seek ways constantly to keep glorifying Jesus Christ in looking around us. Oh, it's the kingdom. It's over there and it's over here. And hey, hey, look. <laughs> so vital for us, friends. Because in this scripture, we're called to have 2020 vision in 2020. To know that at, there will be times when it, it will be the slow, just a slow work of God, but we can still keep examining our hearts and having gratitude before him and allowing the spirit to move and to work, even if it takes a little bit of time, more than we may want to be made well. And also allowing Jesus to, to lead us by the hand of with anticipation, just reciprocating that gesture Jesus offers to you. He lends you his hand in turning toward him in praise, in prayer, in gratitude, and with others to see what our good and gracious God will do in my life and friends and yours. So I ask this question Jesus posed to this man again today to you. Do you see anything? <laughs> Lord, we praise you and we bless you for the life that is all around us, for the invisible work of your kingdom. Lord, you do so much for us that we don't even realize. <laughs> We're thankful for that safe drive here to be able to worship for the people that we came with, if we came with someone else. Lord, we're thankful for the, this beautiful setting, the patio, and for signs of life everywhere. And Lord, we admit that there can be times when we are, we are blind, and so we turn toward you, Lord. And we recognize that you are wanting to lead us by the hand. We are reciprocating that gesture now, Lord God that you would lead us, that you would guide us, that you would speak truth and grace to our lives, that you, Lord, would give us the guidance tour, showing us your kingdom, showing us fullness of life everywhere. God, we turn toward you with you in plain view, Lord, recognizing that you are asking us, do you see anything? We look to you toward purpose, toward enjoyment of you and your character. And to bring you glory, Lord Jesus Christ. We bless you and praise you this day. In your son's name, amen. amen.
mountain with my hands wide open I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open I will climb this mountain with it all. Praise God. I, I want to thank Beth and Chris once again for their leadership. Uh, what a privilege it is to have them leading us here in person and worship. And briefly, before I offer the uh, benediction for this morning, the blessing, with permission from Ray, I want to tell you just a little brief story. Um, and in between services, so at the last service, Ray was wearing a mask. So we were regrouping in between services, and I went inside and we were just talking with one another about how the service went. And I said, just so you know, we have a, a clear face shield for you if you want to use it. And he says, oh, like this one. So he went in his office and he, and he pulled it out. And he says, yeah, but I can't see anything in it. I said, Ray, what do you mean? He says, well, I put it on. It's all blurry. It's like, it's like there's something wrong. We need to return it. I said, no, Ray, there is a film on both sides of it. You have to peel it off, buddy. You see, what Ray was doing is he was seeing people walking around like trees. <laughs> and what he needed to do <laughs> was to have that film pulled back with a little encouragement from a friend. <laughs> it's all 2020 now. See, Ray, this is it, healing before your eyes. Friends, as we leave here today, what we're asking Jesus to do is to peel that film back, right, <laughs> from our eyes that we can see clearly. And above all things, perhaps, it's the eyes of our heart. So I want to commend to you today to turn toward Jesus, friends. Let him lead you by the hand. And knowing that there are times, yes, when it'll be the slow work of God in your life, but nonetheless, we can turn toward him with praise, with gratitude, keeping him in plain view in order that our sight would be completely restored in this year of 2020. And don't ever forget, friends, to lean on one another, your friends here, your gospel friends, for encouragement, love, strength, and support, because they are cheering you on, pointing you to the Savior right here among us in his purposes. Now, with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, descend upon you and abide in your hearts this day and forevermore. And all the people said,